So we went to Tractor Supply for tractor things. That's cool to say. I've never done that before. Gone to Tractor Supply for actual tractor stuff. I feel like I'm part of the club now. And uh, they're doing their chick days right now where they have little baby chicks. And this is uh, the hole that we fell in in Washington whenever we you know, went down this whole rabbit hole of our homesteading journey and ultimately ended up out here on 43 acres in Texas was because we went to a tractor supply one day and Bailey saw the chicks and just had to have one. Well, that happened to us again today. I wasn't planning, I, we were planning on getting chickens, but I wasn't planning on getting chickens for, I don't know. I had this whole idea that I would get everything mowed down and everything would just be absolutely perfect. I'd have the brooder set up in the brooder barn. We'd have electricity out there. Everything would just be, you know, perfectly perfect to bring animals onto Fuller Farms. Well, now I'm going to have to scramble because we bought 20 chicks today at Tractor Supply and I have nowhere to put them. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We, uh, for some reason, had this cat carrier setting in the truck. And so we were able to put the chicks in that. I mean, they're, they're okay to hang out in there for just a little bit, but I gotta find like a, a brooder to put them in. And we're gonna put it in, in the normal garage for now. The ultimate goal is to have that white barn setting out there being our brooder barn and be able to have electricity and have a couple uh, brooder stalls set up out there. And that'll be where we have all of our babies. So we don't have that set up right now. I, there's no electricity out there. I don't have an extension cord long enough to run all the way out there. So for our, for our heating uh, pads and heating lamps. Not that I really think you need a heating lamp in summer in Texas because it's like 95 degrees already, especially inside a metal barn. But we gotta give them something. But I, I can't get electricity out there. It's just not practical right now to have them out there. So we're gonna put them in the garage, but I gotta figure out some way to have a brooder for them for this initial time. I'm gonna build one. I don't know if I'm gonna build it today or not, but I'm gonna build it. What I'm thinking is that I have this dog house over here and it doesn't have the roof on it. I have this dog house sitting right here and I'm thinking that I could just move it inside of the garage and use it for now. And it might do us pretty good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it out of this grass right here and get it out here so I can actually look at it and see if it's gonna be good enough for us. Uh -huh. All right, so I do think it's gonna work out. This might be pretty good. It's big. I only have 20 chicks, so this should be good for them until we're ready to move them outside or until I you know, build a more permanent fixture. This will do all right. I just gotta close up that hole. What is this one? We have this other big giant box sitting here too, but It's got holes all around it though. Like that almost seems like it was a dog house, but it doesn't have a roof on it. The roof that's setting on it goes to this dog house. We'll see, I gotta get this, it's kind of heavy. I gotta get it moved over here into the garage, but I also need to clear a space in the garage for it. So let's do that real quick.
I got enough terracotta pots. I need to get rid of them. I don't, I don't want terracotta pots, but I think this would be a really good spot for the chick coop because I do have a heat lamp right here, or at least the heat lamp housing. And this right here is the only place that I have electricity if I run an extension cable over to the house, which I can do that no problem. And you get a little fan up here too. Chicks don't need a fan, but I do. So we'll put them, we'll put the dog house right here and use this space until I can get something else built up. I'm gonna put a piece of cardboard down right there to kind of act as the floor. So I knew I was keeping this for a good reason. When we were leaving Washington, I almost sold this uh, hardware cloth and I didn't and I'm glad I didn't. Cause now I get to use it. I'm gonna cover up, I wanna face the dog door of this uh, brooder outward so that Emmy can see the chicks. She can walk up in here and see them. And I don't want the dogs to get in there and I don't want the chicks to get out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put hardware cloth around the front of this uh, dog opening and then I'll make like a uh, ceiling probably just to keep the dogs from getting in there. A lot of people probably use tin snips to cut hardware cloth and that, I mean, that's the best way you could do it, I assume, or wire cutters. No matter what, cutting hardware cloth or chicken wire or any of that, it's kind of a pain. But I did find a better way to do it. If you can believe it, if you can believe it, I'm gonna show you a better way to cut hardware cloth right now. So DeWalt makes this adapter to go onto an impact drill or just any kind of electric drill. This thing comes in so handy. I've been I bought this a few months ago, and I've kind of played with it, um, just cutting stuff around whenever we're up in Washington, cutting around stuff on the side of the house, but I haven't been able to like really put it to use on a project, and I'm going to now, and I'm really excited about it. So, this guy just attaches to any, it can be any drill, any electric drill. Um, it just has that quarter inch uh, connection there. So you snap it on, to any drill. Snaps right in there like that. Um, this arm kind of goes down and serves as a uh, secondary, just like a brace almost right there. And then this guy here is, is uh, movable, 360 degrees. And this chomps down on it. So this is meant to cut up to, I, I think it's 18 gauge wire. So let's try it out on this thing. Boom. This is just a much more efficient way to cut hardware cloth. That's still not fun to cut hardware cloth or chicken wire or anything like that, but this definitely does make it a lot easier. So let's measure that hole real quick, find out how big of a piece here we need, and we'll get to cutting. We're just gonna cut a two foot strand of this thing off because this is two foot by two foot, but this is already two foot wide. So that's helpful. See how easy that was? 
That, that little adapter is awesome. I'll, I'll put a link, the Amazon link down in the description if you want to pick up one of those. They're not that expensive. It just attaches on there and then just makes cutting hardware cloth and chicken wire so much easier. That would have taken me five minutes to cut with 10 snips. I think that's gonna turn out pretty good. What do you guys think? Leave me a comment. Think that's a good idea, bad idea. I've had a few different types of brooders over the time that we've been, you know, raising chickens and stuff. I think this is probably one of my favorite ones. We're trying to reuse things out here as much as we possibly can. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to have to go to the store and spend a bunch of money on lumber and and uh, things to build brand new stuff whenever I have things that probably work just fine. Now, long run, I do wanna go build a, you know, two five foot by five foot breeder, uh, brooder stalls out in the brooder barn, but for right now, hey, this'll do just fine. That net's cool. Amy can come up here and, and play with the chicken and look at them. That'll be really fun for her. Might just need to put some nails in this here. And then, hey, when we're all done with it, it can become a doghouse again. I'll just clean it up, slap the roof back on it, stick it outside, and the dogs will have a place that they can go. Although they do just like hanging out in the garage. They don't leave here very much. I ran my extension cord out here and put my fan on, and oh, this is so much better. I'm going to throw the wood chips in here, get some food and water down for these guys, and get these little chicks in here. These are the first farm animals at Fuller Farms. We got 20 golden sex link laying hens. And at the end of the video, I tell you what we're I'll tell you what we're gonna call them as a group. You hear different YouTube channels and different farmers call their uh, laying chickens and their meat chickens and, and their different animal uh, groups different names. Well, we got a funny name for these guys that I think you're gonna like. Before you guys yell at me, I'm gonna make little, uh, little tables, little hardware cloth um, risers for those waters, so that the chickens don't get a whole bunch of dirt and stuff into them, and all the wood chips and get them real dirty. Uh, I just don't have any small pieces of wood right now to make them, so I'm gonna have to go scavenge around the property and see if I can find some. I'm gonna do that next. I'm gonna just get these guys in here, get them some out. We put apple cider, uh, apple cider vinegar water, the magic water, and uh, we're gonna dip their beaks in here and make sure that they're all settled and we'll go search for some pieces of wood to make those little uh, stands. All right, well, all of our chicks are in there. I think they're gonna be happy. We got them on the organic uh, chick starter grower. We're gonna be switching over and using, uh, using Texas Naturals organic feed. Uh, they didn't have any at the store whenever we went, so we'll just have to run into the feed store here in our town and get some Texas Naturals. We have our first chicks on Fuller Farms. Now what are we gonna call them? What are we gonna call our, our uh, egg layers? Now these are all egg layers. Oh, look at that. They already found the food. Right on. They already found the food. They're getting some, they're getting some nutrition into them. These are gonna be some great egg layers. These are, these are 20 golden sex link egg laying uh, pullets. Pullet is what you call a chicken, a female chicken before it lays eggs. And then it's called a hen after that. They're just getting after that. Our name for, these, for this group, this group of chickens, now we're gonna have multiple 
groups of chickens eventually. So these are going to be called, they're golden sex links, so we decided that we're going to call them the Golden Girls. Not to be confused with Betty White and her gang, unless Betty White and her gang also laid eggs. We won't go there. We're, the, we're going to call these our Golden Girls. Our Golden Girl, they're going to be laying our eggs for us. We have 20 of them, so I'm hoping that whenever they're in their prime, uh, egg laying, you know, between that six, six months and two years mark, that we're getting about 20 eggs a day and I'm hoping we're gonna get about 18 eggs a day we've raised chicks chickens before we know that they all don't lay every single day so we're hoping to get um, between a dozen to 18 eggs every day and that's a lot of eggs we're gonna eat a lot of eggs we're excited we're excited to have chickens on the farm now they came a lot sooner than we than I was really planning I don't know when like I don't know the exact time frame that I was gonna say, okay, we're gonna make our order for chickens. And today it just kind of happened. We were looking at them at the tractor supply and a lady walked, one of the workers walked up and said, hey, can I get you all some chicks? And Bailey just, yep, and just yelled out, yes. I'm like, oh, all right. Well, now we gotta get everything else too. That's all right, we're getting started. We brought our first, our first farm animals here on Fuller Farms. And just to close out this video, I wanted to show you kind of what we got done yesterday. I got the tractor out yesterday after we pulled all the fence line that you saw in the previous video and we knocked out our first pasture mowing job. Look at this. It's just so beautiful. This is this is um, what we consider our front pasture. Now this is the first half of it. There's another half over on this side. Um, this side here is about, I think it's about 10 to 12 acres. And then the other side is, um, I think about 15 acres. If I'm remembering correctly. Um, but yeah, we got it all mowed down now. It started raining. I, I, I was working. It was about 8, 8.30 in the evening yesterday. The sun was going down. I busted a shear pin on one of my last, you know, run throughs this area. And I got out to start fixing it and it just started dumping rain on me. So I said, okay, we'll call it a day. I got up this morning and fixed the shear pin. And probably this afternoon when it dries up a little bit because it rained this morning. Um... When it dries up a little bit, I'll get out and finish the last few stripes on that. And I'm going to start working on the other pasture. So slowly and surely, we're opening up each section of this land to kind of reveal uh, what she has to offer and like what she really looks like. And it's beautiful. It really makes the, you know, giving just like that nice mow job, one, it makes it look really nice and beautiful, but then it also kind of opens it up and makes the area feel a lot bigger than it did before. So see, if you look at this pasture here, that is what this looked like. I mean, even all the way up to here, this is our backyard, or front yard, front yard. It, it looked like this all the way over here and up to the pasture. You could barely see our fence line out there. So. This will soon be coming down. We have a tree knocked down out on that side of the pasture that I need to cut down, but that's, that is not a one-man job. I don't think I could tackle that efficiently by myself without just totally wearing myself out. So I'm gonna hold off on that tree until we can get that pasture mowed down and then maybe I can get some uh, friends, anybody watching that wants to come help, <laughs> and some family to come and uh, help me take that tree down. All right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out with us today. I'm going to go scrounge up some uh, wood to make some stands for those waterers so I can get them set up a little bit so that the chickens don't just knock a whole bunch of wood shavings and poop and whatnot into their water and it stays clean. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you on the next one.